Uh, Santiago, hi, and thank you for joining this discussion on Faces of Digital Health about uh, healthcare digitalization in Argentina. Um, so where, where, where do we even start with Argentina? I have did uh, some digging and there's a lot of kind of uh, positive sentiment about its state of healthcare. It's supposed to be really good compared to other countries uh, in South America. So how would you describe it? How do you perceive it? Well, we, we, we recognize that Argentina is perceived in the medical community, at least in the Latin American community, as a high level, uh, you know, human uh, medical uh, uh, physicians. Uh, 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 the, the, the level of professionalism is, is really high and is, is, is really welcoming in other markets. Um, I would say that's, that's the, 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 the very, the very biggest strength of, of our uh, medical system. The people and the, the human resources is great. We, we have a tradition, a long tradition of free medical education in free public universities. And at the same time, in the last two years, private universities joined the, the medical education, the faculties. So, so, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we do believe that. And, and, and you see a lot of, you know, uh, students coming, medical students coming from Latin American countries to learn in Argentina. So, yeah, we're fortunate to have that uh, workforce uh, working and creating uh, medical services from Argentina. And is it, given that you mentioned that uh, healthcare education is free and we see that uh, the healthcare workforce uh, shortages are present across the globe, do a lot of people try to go to other markets to work as clinicians after they finish their studies? Well, um, you know, one thing you mentioned is that Argentina has one of the highest levels of physicians per habitant. Uh, you know, we, we have even a, a higher level than the U European community and by far the highest level in Latin American countries. We do have, I, I think the number is around 200,000 uh, physicians. Um, and, and then you have other uh, medical professionals, right? Uh, like nurses and stuff. Uh, but um, yes, of course, uh, a lot of medical professionals are, are going to, to work abroad. The thing is, obviously, they need to recertificate in the different countries in which they, 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 they move. But yes, uh, we do, we believe we export, you know, um, a lot of physicians that go into different markets to, to, to practice their, their medicine arts. Yeah. One of the specifics of the market, uh, or maybe not even a specific, it's actually quite common to see it in uh, different countries that basically uh, in different regions, healthcare uh, maturity or especially digital maturity differs from region uh, to region. And that's supposed to be uh, the same in Argentina. So, and every time that we uh, start talking about the challenges with access to care, and uh, regional development that differs uh, from place to place, technology and uh, telemedicine uh, come in. So what kind of changes do you see um, in that regard? Where would you say that Argentina is really strong and how has it been uh, developing uh, in the digital health sense? Well, um, you know, as I told you, I think the human factor uh, is great not only the medical human factor, but also the technology human factor. We are recognized, at least in Latin America, for high levels of creativity and um, software development uh, talent, and of course, medical talent. Uh, so on that side, we are, I think we are very good. Um, on the other side, as you probably heard, Argentina has been in a cr economic crisis for the last, I don't know, 50 years. We are a very cyclical country in terms of politics and economy. And, and of course, you can bring a lot of uh, private and personal talent into that system, but still the system is in, 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 in heavy crisis all the time. So that brings us a lot of obstacles in terms of not only in the private sector, but also in the public sector, changing governments, changing uh, political parties. That brings a lot of inconsistency. Um, and sometimes some, you know, some, some, chaos into the projects that you need to develop and consistently, um, you know, uh, pursue during the years. So basically, we do have a, a very complicated 
uh, context and a, a very you know high level of of talent trying to make it happen. So saying that, uh, we've seen some very very interesting advancements in digital health. Uh, in the public sector and both in public and private, uh, but at the same time, that that doesn't mean that uh, we created an equity of access to the to those tools and and the spread of those tools through all the country. Okay, so we we've seen a lot of advancement, yeah. but still a lot of ground uh, to 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 grow. Yeah, I guess from the business perspective, it's easy to imagine that if the political situation is not stable, it's also really difficult to work in those conditions, especially if you're a startup where VCs will not be, you know, um, comfortable supporting you in an unstable environment. I guess if you look at South America, Venezuela is a good example of how, because of the political situation, healthcare disintegrated uh, completely um, as well. So I was quite surprised actually to to see that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Let me add one key one key word, which is disparity. If I if I need to to point one uh, word that would you know. uh, make the landscape is disparity. You have high level, very sophisticated tools and, and digital health uh, innovation in some parts of the country and some cities in some uh, uh, government uh, agencies and or private uh, uh, entrepreneurial companies. And then in some other regions of the country, you don't have access to very elemental and basic uh, health services. So disparity Maybe the right word to 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 describe how Argentina is evolving in in digital health. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you kind of rec- recognize as a pattern or a trait that keeps the company that are still present on the market going? So, for example, uh, are the founders from Argentina and have scaled in other more stable countries across South America and? you know, the stability elsewhere is enabling them to still stay on this market or something like that? Well, yes, as I told you, the, our context, our economic context is very complicated. That means that the different governments, not, not talking about only a political parties of, of, but, you know, every government, don't care if it is from right or left, uh, need to, you know, to charge you high taxes, um, the, 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 the legal conditions are changing all the time. Uh, so it, it's not easy to, to plan and execute a middle and long term project while the government is moving your rules up, uh, all the time. So, um, that said on one side, on the other side, of course, every entrepreneurial, um, uh, person in Argentina sees the Latin American region as the place to go. So you are all the time trying to, to build and develop ideas that can fit in other markets, because of course markets such as uh, Mexico and Brazil are, you know, maybe four, five, six times larger than Argentina. So basically, you are trying to do your, you know, your your pilot experiences in a market, and then you know, aiming to move forward and extend that uh, services to all to other markets. So that that's what. A typical uh, uh, entrepreneur has in mind when you face a, 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 a startup of a development in digital health in, from Argentina. Mm. I was uh, quite surprised to see that basically the percentage of GDP that's attributed to healthcare, according to the Argentine Congressional Budget Office, is 3.3% of GDP. I think the world... Uh, a bank has uh, immensely higher numbers, but I would trust the local assessment uh, much, much more. So how does that uh, impact healthcare? Because it's not sometimes the percentage of GDP that goes to healthcare doesn't necessarily correlate with the state of digital maturity or healthcare provision. Yeah. Yeah, on top of the of the good human resources that we have, we do spend a lot of money in health. That's that's good news. Um, the the complicated news is that our um, health regulation systems, uh, we don't have such a thing as a, a a federal health system. We do have a decentralized health system, and all the provinces of Argentina, more than twenty provinces, have the rights. 
to, to, to do their own regulations and their own executions. So basically, you do have a lot of money spent, but, it, but instead of taking the synergies of a whole system, you do have local implementations in more than 20 states. So that brings a, a, a huge weaknesses. Uh, uh, why? Because you are doing local implementations every time. And once you have a good technology or a good idea or a good project, you need to convince more than 20 governors or secretaries of health to go ahead and execute that. And they do have the right to do it or not to do it. So that brings a, a huge weakness. And what you will find in that way is that, of course, you, you receive a lot of money and you do have good implementations, but the impact of, of those implementations is limited by the territory. So you do have a, a lot of spotted good projects that move forward, but still not national uh, impact of those good projects. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, maybe we can expand on that a little bit more because that's uh, oftentimes the challenge uh, in Europe where if you want to go to a different uh, country, the market is completely different. The rules are completely different. Even in Germany, it's the same problem as you have basically federal uh, states that decide on healthcare. But I guess in the case of Argentina, at least the language is the same and I guess the culture is the same. So it is potentially a little bit easier to scale across regions or not. Well, the, the, you, you bring a good example. I give you two examples of things that happen in Argentina. Number one, let's say electronic health record. There's a small province called San Luis. They decided to go full into electronic health record in all the public uh, institutions. But then again, that was a terrific project and that San Luis has only half a million population. Uh, and we do have 46 million in all the country. So you're talking about uh, digitalizing 1% of the population with a brilliant project. So it's a great project with low impact in terms of as, as a country, okay? And, and let's go back to another example. We do have a, a very high-end telemedicine example from a public hospital called the Garraham, okay? It's, it's, it's a very top-notch hospital for kids. And they do have awesome technology. They built a telemedicine network trying to implement telemedicine through all the country and have tremendous obstacles. Why? Because the local regulations in every province is different. And of course, for cultural matters, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, when he went into the doctor saying, hey, let's do some telemedicine, you would get a lot of complaints, a lot of cultural um, issues, okay? Of course, uh, after 2020, that those barriers uh, came a little bit more uh, down, but still uh, you do have a very, very high quality player trying to do something and it's very, very tough to, to make this uh, scale it uh, nationwide, okay? So there you have two examples of how very nice implemented projects have limited impact uh, until they go national. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice uh, description of... Uh kind of giving us a little bit of an overview of the the country and how it operates in terms of management of healthcare. And can you maybe tell us a bit more about the digital health aspect of, you know, healthcare provision? So the Ministry of Health did publish a national digital health strategy for 2018 to 2024. So that's, that ends next year. Uh, what are you observing in terms of the strategy and its uh, implementation? How, yeah, how do you see it? Well, um, again, we, we thought it was great news that the government has a, uh, no, the state, not the government, the state had a, a, a digital health strategy. That's a good thing. Number two, the professionals, the different professional public officers that are running this generally are very high level, really um, uh, young people that understand the impact of technology. So that's a second good news. Um, the, the thing here is how, how you can survive the different political parties taking care, uh, taking, uh, office, no, the government. Four years ago, we have a more liberal party running the government. Now we have a different party running and, and people are not happy with, with one and the other. And probably next year we have a, 
different party running the government. So the challenge here is now first, first one, how you can gain consistency implementing those digital health strategies that some government design, a different government started to implement, and a third government will try to keep on implementing. So that's, that's a big challenge, the changing of the power in different hands. And the other thing is what we mentioned before, you know, since we don't have a federal health system, you need to go to the provinces and convince the different local health secretaries to go ahead and implement those initiatives. So that's quite challenging. In my view, uh, it's moving forward. It's good news. Uh, of course, in, in, in the middle of our very, very complex economic context, this is really tough to implement. Because, of course, to move forward with a digital health uh, profound strategy, you need technology, you need education, you need money. Um, so that is, it's really challenging. We're moving forward. We're going slow. But I, I believe we're moving forward. I'm positive of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, one thing to have a strategy and a document published. Uh, it's a completely different thing to actually implement and uh, scale that. So given everything that uh, we said, how difficult do you see it is for uh, companies from abroad to enter the market? How much interest is there even to do that, given the instability and challenges that you mentioned? Well, uh, there are two, two, two sides of the coin, okay? Number one, I, Argentina has, been, has a history of being an interesting market um, uh, uh, it has an economic power which is relevant uh, and of course the economical uh, you know the permanent economical crisis uh, uh, doesn't doesn't do, do us any favor you know uh, welcoming investors and welcoming uh, companies from abroad that want to invest in Argentina so it's 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 a trade off between the opportunity um the you know the maturity of the of the opportunities and then the complexity of the crisis that we face. But still, you see a lot of companies investing in, in Argentina. You have, you, you, you'll find that companies such as um, Amazon Web Services or Google are, are, are installing here some headquarters for Latin America. They have been doing that for the last two decades. So you see that you have a, a, a lot of economic power, human resources value. So still companies come to Argentina. Um, although we do uh, uh, do a lot of, you know, economical um, uh, uh, economical consequences of not behaving well in terms of of how the economic uh, the, the economy goes. You uh, cover and uh, follow the development of healthcare digitalization. Uh, broader than just uh, South America. We actually met at uh, HIMSS in, in Chicago. So given your uh, broad understanding of the digital transformation in healthcare, where do you see the currently biggest opportunities for improvement in Argentina? Um, and maybe you can mention things that are already in play uh, and things that perhaps aren't addressed yet, but could be. Well, uh, of course, um... In, in every country in Latin America, and Argentina is another case, the governments have been moving forward to pass the laws that we all need, that the system needs to, 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 to implement digital health. That's a good point. From every country in Latin America is either pass the laws or in the process of passing the laws that you need, you know, for electronic health record, telemedicine, uh, digital and online prescriptions and stuff. So that's, that's the good point. Um, in terms of opportunity, of course, you don't start to do to, to implement digital medicine unless you implement electronic health records in a wide um, uh, level. Okay, you you need to really spread electronic health record and and to do you know with interoperable technologies so that you can build a a, a, a common language of in interchanging information regarding the patients okay the portability is is critical uh, to have a, a a a certain level of standardization of the information is critical so right there all the latin american countries have the challenge to move forward and keep on digitally digitizing the, the medical records 
we are doing a good job, but still a lot of room to, to improve. And of course, after that, once you are online, doctors and patients, of course, the, 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 the key critical situation is how to achieve medical adherence to the treatments. So, so how, how can you help patients to realize what kind of diagnostics they need, what kind of treatments they are indicated, and, and if they have the ability, the resources, and the will to, you know, comply with that, to be, ad, to, to be adherent with those treatments. So I think all the government, not only in private, but also in, in the public sectors, the challenge is, you know, how to, to, to make people understand their needs in terms of health and, and taking care and be empowered in terms of, you know, the adherence of the treatments they need to move forward to. So I think those are the, the challenges and at the same time, the big opportunities for both the public, the, the, the private sectors, and we, the people that, that confront our, our health issues. Would you, is there anything else that you would add in terms of the culture, given that you mentioned the adherence to treatment and how to convince people to basically follow the, the instructions? So sometimes, you know, there's cultural specifics that are interesting to mention. Does anything um, come to mind in that regard? No, I, I think, you know, uh, among other um, uh, very bad things that happened with the uh, with the 2020 uh, pandemic, I think the the issue that, that now we are more aware of the health issues. I think that's a, a great uh, empowerment tool and insight for for the population. Um, and one thing that the, the pandemic brought to all of us is the willingness to contact our our doctors through the the, the mobile phones and, and and technology, right? And I think that's that's beautiful. I mean, the the the, the actually that. We, the patients, are online. We demand online services. That's a great power, a great kickoff for the system. And of course, the system, private system and the public system are reacting. How, how can we deal with this new, you know, digital patient? I think the, the, the really the empowerment of the people through technology is great and it's making the system move forward. Um, you know, delivering those, those services, the, those new health services that they are asking through technology. So I think those are key drivers for the development of our countries. Yeah, I guess uh, healthcare systems still need to kind of figure out how to adapt to the new approach towards uh, healthcare services and uh, managing demand so you don't overinflate costs and the use of, of healthcare. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add when it comes to healthcare and digital transformation of healthcare in uh, Argentina? or in the neighboring uh, countries. Yeah, maybe it's important to, to mention that we, we feel we do have a strong, a very strong entrepreneurial community here, building and creating and designing uh, digital health services. Um, Argentina has a, a very high level of, of, uh, uh, of talent uh, getting into technology, not only in digital health, but also, of course, in other uh, businesses and, and verticals. But uh, we do have a very, very emerging big community of people trying to invent, to create, to develop. And we do have a, this Latin American vision, a lot of investors uh, understanding that something that is born in a country can go regional, you know, not only Argentina, from Chile, from Brazil, from Mexico. And I think it's healthy that Latin America shares that uh, vision and, and, and community of, of entrepreneurs. I think that's something anyone you you speak in latin america will tell you that you see a lot of entrepreneurial community interacting and creating products that are you know thought from the very beginning to to go to the whole region and not only to a country so i think that's a another uh, very powerful driver into innovation and and digital health is there perhaps any specific innovation that kind of caught your attention specifically that you would like to mention any solution or any project that uh, you think is a good example of a good practice, will good to share? Yeah, this this one that we are all very proud called Mamotest. Mamotest is is aimed to 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 offer um, 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 how do you call it mammo mammotherapies uh, studies for women, and basically what they do is they 
promote that women go to centers to do their mammo test, okay? Upload it into, into an app, and then they do have organized a set of uh, artificial intelligence plus experts analyzing those mammo tests and, and bringing to the woman uh, different services so that they can uh, either uh, diagnose if they, they, they have mama cancer or if they are okay. So they, that, that model was awesome. I don't recall the figures. I can send you that uh, right away, but they've done really an amazing job of, of bringing this awareness to the women's community in terms of mammographies. Um, they've done incredible deliveries in terms of the amount of mammographies that they promoted and the amount of mammographies that they analyzed uh, in a centralized way and, and, and doing this through all the region. Uh, I believe this, this, mm -hmm. this uh, initiative is going regional. So I think it's a great example of how with a piece of technology, you can promote uh, something that, that can go through different territories, no matter what countries, no matter what languages, you can promote a very, very nice uh, initiative, uh, you know, trying to empower the women and, and, and making realize the opportunity that they have to prevent from uh, mama cancer.